I'm Andy Richardson, and this is Hooked UK. see the famous Kildonan Falls, which is on the River Helmsdale in Sutherland, Scotland. And we're going to be hunting once again for spring salmon with Greg Thompson. So we're here on the Helmsdale today, it's absolutely blowing it, cooling, probably impossible condi conditions, yeah? It's, it's very extreme, uh, we've got uh, easterly coming in 35 to 45 mile an hour gusts, it's, uh, it is in great conditions for the spring, uh, the, 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 the winds, wind chill factor is well below zero, yeah. the water's cold, there has been a few springers coming off the river, but the conditions are against us, but nevertheless we are here in the, the beautiful county of Sutherland on this uh, you know, world famous river, the Helmsdale, so we're yeah. going to give it our best shot and yeah. say there's a few fish in the river, we're not holding up much hope, we'll do our best and if we get a spring out it's a bonus, yeah. if, we, if we don't then you know we'll come back and try again another day. I know, I know, but what a stunning area. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful uh, and just let's hope the, the forecasts of heavy snow showers don't prove too. Well, there's, there's been a lot of snow blown, blown through, so I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we get a good pelt. But uh, in, in a funny way, being out in these extreme conditions, it's very raw. It's 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 what it's all about, spring fishing. If, right. you're, not, if you're not prepared to put up with conditions like this in the spring, yeah, that's right. then don't come out in the spring. That's right. Spring salmon, they're a tough reward, but to yeah. get them, you've really got to work for them. And, and yeah. sometimes that means putting up with conditions like this. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll, go, we'll go and give it a go, yeah. Andy. Well, best of luck. Yeah, thanks very much, because I need it. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. Cheers, Andy. We'll yeah. catch up later, okay? Aye. Wind is helping generously. 
Yes, absolutely, it's going to be high for casting. Contrary to what the viewers may think. <laughs> Absolutely. So Alex, you've been a ghillie on the river now for how long? This is my 29th season. 29th season. And how often have you seen uh, conditions like this? Every sort of third, fourth year we get something different. Yeah. It's, uh, we're going through a change in the last 10 years. It's getting better, <coughs> windier, <coughs> much wetter in fact, and much windier. Yep. Even in these conditions, the pools are still fantastic. The fish are not feeling the wind. The, like the, the, the fish are not feeling the wind. No. Or certainly not feeling the hail on her face anyway. Exactly. <laughs> as long as we can get the fly out there. That's it. Then it's found as good a chance as day and you can avoid the wind. Water temperature is pretty good. Yes. As I've said before, spring salmon, if they're there they'll have it. They're not yeah. they're not fussy. They don't mess about. They come in, they're quite violent. Strangely enough, it's quite a soft tea. Sure. And then we wake up. Just as it comes off the screen, yep. start to retrieve it back up the inside of the current. The bottom of this pool is so up and down. You know, one particular line, you know. Might get to the bottom in one step and then next step you're catching. Want to move in close? Yeah. So going back to the Willy Gun. The Willy Gun's uh, a fly that would come from the Brora. Indeed. Yep. Willy was a <coughs> was a gilly on the Brora. He actually Rob Wilson told me this story. He actually came in with a handful of flies, dropped them on the counter, said, "Take your pick and name one after yourself." And Rob Wilson picked one, but he says, no, I'm not going to call it after me. I'll name it after you. And that is the story of the Willie Gun. Story of the Willie Gun. It's caught a lot of fish on a lot of rivers. It certainly has. Thank you. Saved by the bell. So Andy, when you're fishing in a wind like this, it's absolutely imperative to have a, a line and rod set up that's going to work through that wind. And in these conditions, my rod of choice will always be the GLX Stinger from Loomis, 10-11 weight. And I've got this teamed up with a 750 grain Skagit, right at the top end of the Skagit series, weight-wise. And it just cuts right through that wind. Fishing in this wind, the traditional spay line, you, you, you are going to have your work cut out. And then we've got the real motive on the front. Five foot uh, Seagor and uh, the Old Faithful Willie Gun. <coughs> on Upper Torish on the Helmsdale in mid March. Some would say mad, others would say lucky. I'd probably go for the former.
Just it going back. Excellent. <clears throat> Ron, how are you doing? How are you doing there, Greg? Good to see you again. Good to see you, man. Catching plenty of fish in the river now, aren't they? Aye, the river's picked up. It's fishing quite well now. We had uh, a fairly slow start, but um, aye, there's good fish coming in now. Up to sort of twenty one pounds, so for a few eighteens, seventeen, nineteen, good fish. Fantastic, good. And how's it? Good ha average. And the association water, how's that been? Association fit? water's been a little bit slow. Um, not a lot of guys fishing it, mm -hmm. but um, I will start. We'll start picking them off from now on. Good stuff. There's and a few fish shop keeping busy enough. Shop's very busy. Not enough hours in the day, Greg. Good stuff. That's what we're, I like to hear. Uh, kept that it with all these flies. Good. So you I think we have plenty, but uh, <laughs> we've still got loads to tie. You can you can never have enough flies on. That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. It so let's have it. a look at this super snelda. Okay. So Ron, this uh, super snelda that seems to be catching me a lot of fish and yeah, it's doing the business. Absolutely. So you're uh, going to show us exactly how it's done. We will show you exactly how it's tied, Greg. Um, we're tying it on a a humor uh, teardrop tube. Uh, it adds a little bit of weight there, and it also. Uh, preforms the uh, the shape for you. It's it's almost sort of conical shaped, and gives that sort of uh, that Francis sort of style shape. You know, so you've got a head start as far as your your cone shaped body is concerned. We've already added some extension tube on there, and we've glued that in place, so that's that's nice and secure. And basically now we need to to add these all the bristles. This is what seems to give it an extra little kick there. Um, very similar to the, the Francis. And uh, it obviously adds something to the fly. Um, whether it, it works or not, um, as far as the movement is concerned, I don't know. But it seems to, it seems to catch plenty of fish. And it's been catching fish in Iceland since the 60s. So... There's obviously something going for it. We'll just add five, five of these bristles in the tail end here, and uh, that's the basis for the for the fly, like so. Okay, next up we have uh, we've got bucktail. Uh, the original one we tied here was basically just orange orange and yellow in the tail. Mm -hmm. You don't need a huge amount. About an inch and a half there. Orange and yellow. Seems to work. Orange, yellow and black, wherever you go. Primary colours. Seem to do very well everywhere. So uh, there's no difference in this guy. It's quite a big fly. Um, I don't think that uh, makes any difference in the spring. Yeah. You can tie them for the summer, but they get quite tight on the smaller flies. But at the moment, nice big, nice big in-your-face fly. Yep. Doesn't do any harm at all. Um, we'll just add some some flash in there as well. We'll pop in some some angel here. You don't have to be too precise on it, just to get a nice little bit of flash in there. Mm -hmm. Double those back. And a little bit of crinkle flash as well. Two or three strands of that. Spread them around. All the action seems to happen at the back end of this fly. Okay. And now we add some eyes. As I say, the original Francis had had eyes in it, so we decided to pop some in here as well, just to give it a more aggressive sort of look about the fly. So I think 
definitely helps the look of the fly. I think it probably scares the fish a little bit more. It certainly scares me when I look at it front on anyway. <laughs> okay, just whip all that in. And then we'll put a nice thick uh, braid on the rib on the body here. And then we use this mohair, mohair yarn. There's lots going on with this yarn. It gives you a nice big body on it. Nice thick body. And um, it gives the fly another sort of dimension again, rather than just a pure flat body. Makes it quite heavy. And again, makes it look a little more aggressive. Quite a rustic fly. Yeah. Fairly easy to tie. But it comes together very nicely in the end. So that's the body formed. A nice heavy rib on it now. I like putting a strong rib on these spring flies. They, they take a lot of treatment. Obviously we're fishing them, we're fishing them deep in quite tough conditions, quite close to the bottom and uh, they take a bit of a hammering so any strength that we can add to, to these spring flies, the better you know. Okay, that's the eyes in, that's the body pretty much formed. And uh, now we're just ready to put the, the hackles on there. Um, the original had the orange and yellow, same as the, the back end, just a cock hackle, tight and point first, so, oops, Let's see if I can find some hackle pliers, there we go, Fibers back. About three turns does it for this one. It's starting to take shape there. And we'll just finish it off with a yellow hackle here. Not quite so big. This will be a conehead fly. The great thing about the coneheads, uh, it adds adds a bit of protection to the, the head at the end there. Once again, makes the fly pretty sturdy. Just pop a whip finish on that. And adds a little more weight to the fly also. Uh, we usually put a tungsten cone head on these for the spring. Just gets it sounding right down there. Um, but we'll pop that off. All that's left now is to, to trim, trim the feelers. Trim some of the angel here. So now to finish it off, all we need to to do is attach the cone head here, and. A little bit of super glue. Let's trim some of those bits and pieces off. Just pop the super glue in there. And we like to add a, a tungsten cone for the spring fishing. We'll just twist that over. The super glue will tighten that up very quickly. Trim the end and melt back the eye. Melt back the nylon tubing. Pop it 
back in the holder there just to make sure you've got the hole and the fly clear there you have it super snail down ready to terrorize a few more fish so Ron you've been tying flies now for how long? oh since I'm about seven years old eight years old and um, yeah first memories would be rummaging around under uh, Megan Boyd's table out at Contradwell um, looking for bits and pieces to uh, to make flies up and uh, watching all her her moves you know and uh, yeah she she basically uh, showed me how to start the flies and uh, she's quite a character from what I hear she was that you know she never fished she um, she always had a tweed suit on and you know she was a tie quite a quirky old lady <laughs> but yeah it's a little she had no right really to tie flies that were so beautifully proportioned and, and so fishy looking you know mm. because uh, she never fished herself but she she was shown a fly when she was quite young and uh, it was so beautiful it really really took her and she wanted to know how to create this thing so basically she undid the fly she, she took the fly apart uh, to find out how it was made and uh, she, she got into it that way and this here from what i believe is her original advice that's her original advice that's one of her original vices yep um it's you can see it's pretty basic her old stamp where she used to stamp all her letters and uh, it's a real old plunking vice here for the big old irons of course it was all big single hooks in those days and um, yeah it's quite a piece but she would have tied some amazing flies on that vice so it's, it keeps keeps me inspired you know and they're actually making a film on her so I believe they are yes indeed uh, the lads were up filming uh, over the last two years and uh, that's going to be out sometime this year I believe uh, maybe next year but um, that's actually a Megan Boyd that's on there and uh, we've just updated it once again and put took and taken out some of the feathers and added some fox in there arctic fox so it's a it's an old one with a, a modern twist it's a beautiful and, one uh, yeah we just you'd feel a bit guilty fishing with them now yeah you know? absolutely it, uh, the river's a good height for it at the moment, Greg. It'd be worth a go this week. I think. <laughs> it's just about the right size, but uh, there's a there's a huge difference, you know. I know how times what change. Me. How times change, eh? I think she'll be turning in her grave seeing mm. some of these uh, creations that we're making now. But um, yeah, she was quite a lady. Well, yeah, it's, we we tried to get our flies out on display and uh, let everyone see them there. Um, we've got so many different patterns. It's it's amazing that uh, guys are, are are fishing such a, a wide variety of flies, mm. and uh, I find it quite difficult to 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 keep up. But um, luckily, we have uh, we have pulling mill behind us now. Good. Uh, uh, one company that we're, we're we're that's helping me tie um, lots of uh, very nice patterns. Sure. I I really can't tie them all, but I design all the flies that we have here um, are designed by myself, and um, you know I have a, a local mm. tire copying them. Um, and uh, I know I'm going to have 250 people copying them for me Good. which will help greatly and, <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody's wanting yeah. to buy your flies or need any tackle what's your website? yeah it's thehelmsvillecompany.com yeah we're open 24-7 and uh, yeah we're very busy and it's it's there for all to uh, log on to yeah mm. we've got a, a fishing report on how the Helmsville got us there and yeah all these patterns are online yeah well your flies have certainly helped my catch rate so Ah, you're doing well, Greg. Yeah. Hopefully, they can do more, more for other people. Yeah, I'm sure. Good. I'm sure we get uh, quite a lot of feedback. Good. Well, thanks for thanks for having us and showing us a fly. Uh, Great we're, to have you, Greg. Yeah. I'll have you on the river tomorrow for a cast, and Absolutely. hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll catch some fish. I'm looking forward Good. to it. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Good stuff. Tight. Excellent, Ron. Thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. All the best, Greg. We'll see you in the morning. Eh? Cheers. Cheers. Okay.
also Andy, just a little bit about tactics, uh, what we've been using on the Helmsdale. Uh, obviously we've got a hell of a wind coming in off the North Sea. Uh, it's, as we've said, it's 35 to 45 mile an hour gusts, so a lot of overhead casting, heavy Skagit lines, uh, 750 grain with heavy tips and, and, and copper tube flies sometimes, tungsten tube flies. So at this time of year, it's important to be versatile in what, in what you're fishing for and what you're fishing with. So just to show you what, what I use uh, regularly in the spring, I've got my guideline triple density shooting heads here. You know, for a river like the Helmsdale at this time of year, it's not, it's not a deep river, so you get away with the floater intermediate down to a sink two. But the guideline triple densities, you know, they, they go right up to your sink three, sink five, sink seven. So you could, you know, you, the, these lines will cover all, all aspects of fishing in the spring, whether you're fishing on the Tay, whether you're fishing on smaller rivers such as the Helmsdale. Uh, you know, a great kit to have and uh, very, very versatile. The Rio AFS are the same. Your AFS, a great piece of kit to have in the spring, as well as, well as the summer. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Skagit. It's great. I like fishing big flies, big heavy flies and heavy tips. So I fish the Skagit a lot. And, you know, for conditions like this, they're absolutely vital in my eyes. And I think everybody now, you know, you should really have a Skagit in your, uh, in your kit. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vital inclusion uh, in any, any bag these days. As far as tips go, I like to use the, the Rio Mo tips. Now a Mo tip is basically it's a T it's a T tip that's uh, attached to a floating uh, with a floating section on it. You have starting off at twelve and a half foot a T eight tip. These are the light ones uh, down to a ten foot T eight tip, all the way down to a full floater. And you get your five, you get your two and a half, and you get your seven and a half foot sinking tips on these as well. Now, Mo tips come in light, medium, and heavy versions. Uh, you can get them from any good Rio stockist. They're, they're fantastic tips, and they allow you to mow through the pool. And they're designed to be fished with a skadget, and you could just work your way through the pool. If you're starting to hit the bottom, you could bring it up to, to say, a seven and a half foot from a ten foot, or if you need to go deeper, you could go right down to the the the, uh, the twelve and a half foot. So you've got your uh, you've got your your heavy ones. You know you're looking at it's a T11 tip which sinks at nine inches per second. Now if you're really needing to go heavier than that, uh, what I tend to do is I get custom built. You could buy a coil of T uh, T tip, which has basically got tungsten grains in it, and you can make up your own tips. But you've got your 15 foot T14, you've got your T17. If you really really need to get down to these deep holes with big flies, they use these a lot in Western Canada for the steelhead, uh, which is kind of where they originate from. Uh, but they're fantastic inclusion. I actually fish tea tips in low water and high water because I like to be have the fly fishing uh, in front of the fish and not above the fish. And without a doubt, it does increase your catch rate, particularly with resident fish. So that's that's my tips. That's what I like to use. Uh, as I say, you can make up your own tea tips. You could buy the Mo tips. Um, Angler's Choice in Dundee they sell your Mo tips. You could get them online. You get them on eBay. Definitely, if you're fishing a Skagit, I would definitely recommend carry the, the three the three sets, you know, your light, medium and heavy, definitely. Again, you've got your Guideline Triple D. If you prefer to go that way, they're just as good. I personally prefer using my Skagit with T-tips, um, but I do fish Guideline Triple Density and the AFS as well. I try to vary it about. Okay, as far as, uh, as, far as your tip goes, as far as your uh, fluorocarbon goes, Seagore, Hard Ace, that's definitely my, my preferred uh, fluorocarbon. It's never let me down. In the spring, I'll fish 19 to 25 pounds. Uh, if I go to Russia, sometimes I'll fish a bit more than that. Uh, but your 19 to 25 will cover you. As it comes into the summer, I'll go down to 13, 15, possibly lighter, depending on the water conditions. Some people prefer uh, Maxima. Some people prefer other brands. I prefer Seagor. It really is whatever has done you well. Uh, but that's definitely my preferred, my preferred brand. As far as uh, as far as hooks go, Patridge of Redditch, fantastic hook. Your salar hooks, silver salar, gold gold salar hooks. You know your doubles. You can't go wrong with them. I do use trebles as well. To be honest with you, on the tay, uh, people prefer doubles. Some people prefer trebles. Most rivers, people will fish doubles now. Uh, that's certainly in the rules on the D. You can only fish doubles or singles. But uh, down on the tail, still fish a treble hook. To be honest with you, it's really a matter of preference. So, going back to flies, in the spring, as you probably already know, I'm a big lover of long tail flies or monkeys, sunray shadows, but snelders, you know, tungsten snelders, I just absolutely love fishing them. I 
you know, my catch rate on these these guys are great. Uh, you've seen the the Super Snelda, uh, which uh, Ron ties, you know, a, a, a cracking fly. It's just a it's just a beautiful fly to fish. Never mind catching fish. It certainly just catches me, catches anglers. Um, but we've got variations on these now. Uh, we've got some prototypes here where we've got the uh, just the black and yellow. And then we've got the uh, the black, yellow, and orange. So much the same as the original one, but just a bit of more of a black body. Uh, lovely fly, and certainly this will this will do great on the T and the D. Beautiful, beautiful fly. And then we've got this baby, which is it's a prototype, but it's actually going to be named the the posh Nelda, as in the posh tosh, because of the body, uh, black and yellow. It's just got that classic, classic spring fly look about it and it's got the Thompson head and without a doubt this fly is going to be one of the next big things and we're going to we're going to take it out to Russia this year and give it a, a good swim and uh, see exactly what it can do so yeah in the spring your flies aren't as important it's the it's the the depth of the fly the weight of the, the depth of the fly is fishing the weight of the fly <coughs> and most importantly where you're fishing it there's no springers in the pool, you're not going to catch them. It's important to position yourself where there's a good chance of there being a springer. And that's, uh, and that's it, really. Snell does. So, Ron, we've fished the uh, beat four, we've fished beat three. We've come down here to the bottom meet, which is actually the association water. That's right, yeah. Okay. Now, I've fished, haven't fished this myself uh, and caught quite a lot of fish on here. Uh, without a doubt, it's one of the best waters in the country. Yeah, it's, uh, it can be for sure. It really depends on what sort of height we get the river at here through the season. And uh, we like the, the water fairly low down here. It just slows the fish down a little bit. And um, we can pick off a few more. But uh, high water, it fishes well in high water as well, but just not quite as good as the as the low water conditions. But yeah, it gives us oh, anything between 100, 300 fish, all dependent on the conditions. So yeah, it's, 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 it's just over a, a mile long, and uh, plenty of good water, yeah. And to get a permit on here, uh, you contact yourself at the shop with the Helmsdale company. That's right. How much do you Permits, 25 pounds a day, and uh, hopefully the conditions are never like this ever again. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. It is quite fierce today, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> twenty-five pounds a day. Kids, kids can get on here free. Under sixteens can get on here for free, and uh, pensioners are, are half price. So, so it's quite a busy water. That's it. And for, yeah. for twenty-five pound a day to fish on the, the Helm's Hill, the famous Helm's Hill in Sutherland, it's a it's a cracking deal. And That's right. Any That's fish you are going to get is going to be fresh off the tide. Absolutely. We're just a mile from the sea here, and. Um, you know, people think the helm is, is very inaccessible, and I guess it is most of the season. Um, it's pretty much dead man shoes to get on the, the, the top beats here, but uh, the association water is open all the time, and it's uh, it's a good chance, as you say. So, but the, there are an absolute storm. Yeah, an absolute storm. Um, I with the, the recession kicking in and things. Avail, there's more availability coming up on the river now than, than ever before. So it's 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 good and bad, you know. You, you've definitely got a much better chance of getting on to the to the upper beats there. So uh, it's it's not all doom and gloom yes, in that's that respect. It. Well, we've come here. The conditions are against us. We've, uh, totally, we've, yeah. we've tried for our springer. There has been a few off this week up to 18 pound. That's right. For one it's of my nice clients, for, uh, Rennie Miller. He came up and uh, had a cracking fish. He was delighted the other day when he went home. Yep. So. Uh, Good on him, but unfortunately it's deteriorated from then. Yeah, and, uh, it's real bad now. Yeah, you know, it's very tough. Tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow's another day. Um, easterly wind on this coast is is not the way forward. So the sooner that wind changes around, the better, and uh, we'll get we'll get back into the fish. Well, yeah. I'm sure we'll be up here before not too long, and uh, hopefully get some more yeah. Atlantic salmon action. Well, yeah, for sure. Great to have you up, Greg, with the team, and uh, yeah. Anytime, Ron. Come Good back stuff. anytime. Yeah. Thanks for having us. No worries at all. Thank you very much. There he is. <laughs> Fish on! <laughs>